Hey everybody and welcome uh, to the fittest uh, podcast on the island of Barbados. We are podcasting for the most breath taking obstacle course race in the world. We're talking about the Barbados Adventure Race. I'm Salt. You're accustomed to seeing me with a uh, gorgeous George. He's not here right now because, of course, he's the race director of the Barbados Adventure Race. And the Barbados Adventure Race is tomorrow. We're recording this the Friday before the weekend. Um, we're going to be going on the Saturday and Sunday. Lots and lots of action to be expected this weekend. By the time you hear it, it will be all over. I hope you have already got your tickets. I hope you went and you enjoyed yourself thoroughly. And you're just listening to this podcast to see what George and Salt talk about the day before bar. Well, I've got George on the line because he is the race director. So he's actually very busy up at PEG, uh, setting up and making sure everything is good and that all the rigs are solid, all the walls are where they're supposed to be, all the bells are where they're supposed to be. Right, George? Correct. Listen, I've been here since about five o'clock this morning, oh, and wow. yeah, it's just it's just hectic. I got these guys out here now with the containers. Mm. One guy was going down inside the gully to put up the rope for the rope climb, <sighs> and he couldn't get stick up in mud. <laughs> we had to go pull him out. The two guys here with the other containers for the containers reverse mash up the frame that's supposed to go on top of the the container, so they gotta go back in the yard now and weld it. So. There's just so much that happens behind the scenes right. that people don't get to see when they turn up on the day, right? And if you're doing your job well, it's like, you know, people come into your house and you're kicking things underneath the couch. Yeah. That's what, we do. we, that's what we're doing right now. We're trying to get everything kicked underneath the couch so you can just come in, sit down, have dinner, enjoy yourself, watch some TV and then go on home safe. You, you don't know how hectic, you don't know how the house nearly burned down. Correct. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so we had the race briefing last night, and everybody seems eager and ready to go. I've never seen a, I call it a Zoom meeting with so many individuals in it. Actually, uh, I was actually very impressed by the amount of attendance that we had at the meeting uh, for the race briefing, which means that competitors are keen. Absolutely. I mean, I don't even know how many there were in the meeting because I had uh, one of my friends, Ron Johnson. She she chaired the meeting for me. Right. Because my intention was to get there and test everything and, you know, be, be very sure about what I was doing before. Mm-hmm. And listen, I go out the shower at 6.53 or something for the meeting that was happening at 7. So <laughs> there was no time to test nothing. It was like, all right, Siobhan, you can chair this meeting. I can jump on and do my thing. Right. And then we get this information across to everybody about what was happening over the weekend. Right. Actually, and, and so I think that you were actually touching on something that I find very interesting, which would be the race prep for tomorrow. You started to talk about Korean sticking up. I know you stick up on Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, is this one of the most hectic preparations you've had for a bar race? This one, not so much. You know, I, I will say that it's hectic largely. What's, what's really held us up was the weather, right? Because weather, yeah, it's been raining. Yeah, it's been raining for a while. So even though yesterday was sunny, yesterday being the Thursday before the event, mm-hmm. the ground was still super saturated. Mm-hmm. So it meant that our kind of heavy vehicles couldn't travel along peg as they would like, mm-hmm. um, which means a very slow, laborious process of putting things on the back of my four wheel truck, may actually putting planks on the back, on the top of the head, and walking around the farm with it, which makes things very slow. Yeah. But outside of that, I feel like. As with each event, like my team in very commas, people who work on the event, because if I ain't paying them, I guess I really can't call them my team. Yeah. But people who who are really passionate about the event and who jump in and help, mm-hmm. they know their roles very, very clearly now. So Stephen knows how to put together the walls. The walls are already built. You just got to go and assemble them. Right. It's only when I throw a spanner in the works by bringing something new that he has to know construct from scratch yes. that that might slow things down a little bit. So hopefully... After the weekend is done, when you listen to this next week, hopefully everybody enjoyed this rig that we built, <laughs> this mm-hmm. dive platform, and um, you know people people approached it with enthusiasm and had some fun doing it, and we don't have any any controversy around it. But I think it's a fun obstacle. It's a fun obstacle, and it's visually impactful. It so we is placed super it. impactful. Super intimidating, George. Well, I mean, kind of. I mean, it looks tall and it's big, but when you and think about it... it's far away, too. It looks far apart. Nah, that's only 12 feet, man. You could, <laughs> you could probably... <laughs> but you see, if you were jumping 12 feet straight across, it might be a thing. But when you jump jumping 12 feet and you like, dropping, you know, basically below the ground, you might still crab off like that. I, I really want most people to miss the jump, to be honest. <laughs> I want, so that's I want, why you said it's too I want, close. 
yeah, I want most people to miss the jump and land in the pool and splash boat and thing and smile and laugh and enjoy themselves, you know, because in the end, I, I, we, we keep saying it all the time, but bar is just one big adult playground and we want yeah. it to feel like that. Even in the middle of a relatively serious competition, we want people to be smiling and laughing and having fun because that, that was always my intention in creating this event. You are the race director and you are tasked with making sure that the event is as spectacular for spectators as it is for the athletes. I think where you have put uh, this obstacle, this, is, this bar is not going to be known as the dive platform bar. You know, the, the one, the one up and um, Pothouse would have been the one with the, the first container traverse. We knew that as a container traverse bar. And the last right. bar before this would have been the one with the pipe. That was the pipe bar. Right? So well, the slit wall, the slit wall. The slit wall, wall yeah, the slit wall for yeah. sure, yeah. And so now this one going to be known as the diver platform bar. I think that yeah. where you have put it, situated it in the race, you have already done everything else that you have to do in the bar race, whether it's in right. singles or in the competitive. Is it in the open wave as well? It's in the open wave as well, yes. Single. We don't want anybody to miss out on this one. We yeah. want everybody. <laughs> so you, you've <laughs> done everything you had to do so far. So it's like, even if people are intimidated by it, the fact that they, it's, they've come so far, you're not going to quit here. So I Correct. think you're going to get some spectacular shots from that dive platform. I can't wait to see them. Absolutely. And I think also the, the good thing about it is is that, you know, it's close to the start-finish line, right? So yeah. I'm waiting for my wave, which is wave number two. And and I I would have, let's say my wave is, I would see the guys in wave, wave one do it. Right. And I would see, well, hang on, them men do it. And then it happened to the body. It looked like fun. And that might relax me a little bit that might put me at ease as long as I can see somebody succeed on it I know I can succeed too yeah um so that will help to put make it less intimidating I would think it, it, it is a, a bit of a ticklish one because obviously you have athletes of different um calibers so they got certain men that if you can jump I almost it can be too close for them even if you <laughs> and then get, and again but belly search by the top part of the platform <laughs> and the people well, they were gonna be they were gonna be very spectacular athletes to jump six foot in the air twelve feet across. <laughs> right. So I think the guys who can jump straight across would would land on the cargo net. That the that's kind net. of success in in this obstacle to jump from the platform and actually miss the water altogether and end up on the cargo net and just climb over and go along. So yeah. that would be that would be spectacular. I would like to see a few of the guys actually achieve it. I'd like to see a few of the ladies achieve it. Yeah, for sure. But falling into water with some four pit cubes can't be the worst thing either. You know, it's so definitely not going to be the worst thing. This, this is bar. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably going to be the best thing, isn't it? <laughs> right, right, right. You'll get to cool off a little bit after that run. A lot of people well. are talking a bit about the um, trail, you know, given the fact we've had the weather that we've had building up. Uh, to bar, how, how concerned or not worried are you about the conditions in Jorah's River Forest? I was more concerned until this week. Uh, this week, we actually, you know, we've been doing practice runs and trainings over the last few weeks, and, and that has been great for me because what it's allowed me to do is to test the course and test that I'm actually pitching it at the right level to make it still challenging enough for advanced athletes, but achievable for somebody who may not be who may not have been training as long but who has a relatively decent level of fitness yeah and and one of the things that we discovered this week was that they cleared the trail so previous to that i was really i was a little apprehensive because there were lots of fallen trees across the trail i, I found um, that those were natural obstacles though they... correct and and somebody's gone ahead and, and actually tr clean them out, which will make it a lot, a lot, a little bit, I would say, faster than it normally would be. Yeah. Um, but also, it means that if there was an untoward event, it would now be easier to access right. the trail to get any of the athletes out and make sure they were safe. I honestly didn't even think of that part. It was like, child, to take out all the hurdles from the forest. But you are indeed right. If there was something that was supposed to happen, you would be able to get access to any individuals in the forest. And what has happened with the rain, I can tell you, is that there are some other new natural obstacles in the name of puddles and mud pits all throughout. Correct. You cannot run the forest as hard as you normally would. I can tell you that for a fact. It is slippage, slippage areas all over the forest. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to really add to the fun element of it. Um, what it will mean is that guys are going to have to find other other areas to make up distance and make up time. Mm -hmm. um, and it might actually be a little bit of a leveler, you know, because the first 4K or so of the ICBL competitive event 
it's mostly running. There's a couple of obstacles, but it's really mostly running. So yeah. if you are if you are a team of very good runners, you could actually put quite a bit of distance on on the other teams. But the forest being what it is now will definitely uh, slow some people down. It will make things a little bit more even, so that those athletes who are you know, of good fitness, they might be strong, they might be agile, they might be obstacle proficient, but not as competent runners. Yeah. They actually still have a chance in these I, mean, I like that about obstacle course racing is that you have to be proficient in carries, obstacles, and in the running. I know you've added another wrinkle, the basketball shot. <laughs> I know that. Is that like, yes. That is also a great leveler. I think so. I, I, I'm hoping that people don't stick up there all day because you wouldn't want one obstacle to to cause you know a team that was otherwise of one to um to lose the event <clears throat> but my aim is to test every single aspect of fitness so when you join a, a gym or so and you tend to focus on you know muscular strength muscular endurance you focus on cardiovascular fitness flexibility and body composition those tend to be the primary elements of fitness those are what we call the health related aspects of fitness right and then you have like speed power agility, quickness, balance, coordination, accuracy. Now, those are the performance-related elements of fitness. And I'm trying to include something that challenges every single one of them except body composition because I don't really care how people look right. so far. You can look however you want if you're able to come out and do the event and, and have a good time with it. I don't care if you're a 5% body fat or 50% body fat as long as you can complete the event safely uh, and have some fun with it. But all these other elements... And that is well, actually a good a good point that you made there. And I think that is one of the things that attracts me um, to obstacle course racing and the Barbados adventure race is that you can't look at some person and say, oh, them is a bar athlete. You've got people who are very muscular, who are competent. You've got some people that are very slight that are competent. Right. You understand? Right. It's just about having that level of fitness, but I think it's the mental fitness as well that really helps people in the Barbados adventure race. Absolutely, and, and I want to give a shout out to, to one of our ambassadors. Um, her name is Joyce Lynn Ali, yeah. and Joyce Lynn is is a, a lady who is, you know, she's very good. She's a decent runner, mm-hmm. and but her upper body strength may not be the same as one of the bigger guys in the field. Yeah, and and I've never seen Jocelyn like tap out. Like she never complains. She never grumbles. She just grits her teeth and, and works through. And I, I want to give her a shout out because she was unable to do the bar last weekend because she picked up a little knock in training. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want Jocelyn to know that we were thinking about her all weekend and, and we hope that she will be better soon. I'm definitely thinking of you, Joyce. And that's the brilliant thing about bar and the whole family because on after she picked up the knock on the Monday, on the Tuesday, I mentioned to another bar athlete, oh yeah, I mentioned, I uh, messaged her Joyce in today to see how she's doing. And she was like, oh, I messaged her too. And then somebody else was like, yeah, I messaged you too. So it's like everybody on the off, not in the group chat, but on the off, genuinely concerned for her safety and her mm-hmm. well-being and understanding what she's going through because we'd have trained for this for a long time. Correct. And I mean, you know, to, to, to work this hard and not be able to actualize the event, not to be able to go out there and, and actually take part and test yourself on the course. And even if it's not about testing yourself necessarily, but to complete that process yeah, it's of training yeah. and competition, it, it would leave you feeling a little bit unsatisfied. Um, but, you know, she's a trooper, so I'm sure she's going to just put her chin down and then come back next year stronger than ever. When you say come back next year, when are we looking for the next tomorrow? Well, I mean, our normal schedule is June and November. June. Um, and, and right now, that is the plan. <clears throat> um, COVID cooperates, then we're going to try and push ahead with June. Uh, one of the things that, that we, we realized this, this November was that a lot of sponsors just weren't able to come on board. And obviously, with three months of lockdown, sales would have been down. Many people lost their jobs. The economy was not the same in Barbados. So a lot of sponsors weren't able to make that contribution. And BAR is an expensive event. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is like, Look at I mean, one wall is expensive to build and you look at the lumber and the play and the manpower, et cetera. So this is not something that we can do without significant sponsorship. Yeah. Um, and, e- and even so, you know, we kind of have a more of a, a five-year break-even plan, um, which is adjusted now for what I anticipated to be three years. So we're going to be in a hole for a little while. Yeah. So if things, are, if things are really bad sponsorship-wise, we may choose to do the event just once next year. But as long as our, our dedicated partners commit to it, we 
we don't have to make a lot of money on this event. We we started doing this event out of passion and out of a little bit of brand awareness and brand exposure. And as long as we can break even on it or come close to breaking even on it, we will push for both events in 2021. So we're looking at, it's always the last weekend in June mm-hmm. and the second to last weekend in November. So unless there's some major, major event that's been, that will be announced between now and early next year, that will be the schedule for, for 2021. So if you're listening to this podcast and you didn't compete in the last bar, you know you have a whole six months uh, uh, to get ready for the next bar, hopefully the last weekend in June. No, let's get to the meat of the matter. 16 minutes into the podcast, George. Right. You know, we promised the last week some predictions. Right. right? All right. So what are we doing? We're dealing with the competitive. Um, right. We're going to start with the competitive team. We're going okay. to go over to the ladies' singles, and then we're going to end with the men's singles. Right. right. So we're doing it in waves because obviously we're doing it our COVID protocols. I'm just going to run through the teams here quickly for you listening. Then the first wave for the teams, Obstacle Killers, Outdoor Fitness, Built Different, Connect 4, Riot. And then at 2.30, the second heat, Mud, Sweat and Tears, Push and Go True, Misfit, Run, exclamation mark, a Bucket Up. And then on the third and final heat on a Sunday evening will be Matt Guyvers. The safe word is Kumquat, Team Day 2, Jiggy, and Team Across Tribe. All right, so we're looking at a top three for the team event, George. Right. So just, just a, again, another mention of that Queen, Team Cross Tribe originally included Originally included Joyce Lynn, oh, right. and um, when she got injured, they kind of moved down to the open to wave. the open wave. Right. Yeah, this is fair enough. So yeah, so I, as much as I would like to say otherwise, I think that Obstacle Killers is two is going to win again. Obstacle Killers. I think. Yeah, I think if this were over two days, I would pick built different. Because I would think that their legs would be a little heavy from the running, and over the second day, built different. I think is going to be it's going to be much more obstacle proficient. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be stronger overall. But where it's just fresh legs on the run on day one, I think that obstacles may just have that little pit. And and it's I don't even want to bet that I wouldn't even bet on that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a very close it's going to be very close I think one of the most difficult things with the predictions that we're going to be making on this podcast is the fact that we haven't seen a lot of these teams working out outside of what they would have done at the pop up at, at Bushy Park so we don't exactly, exactly and, and they, they are at correct and I think the new obstacles could make or break a team mm-hmm. the new obstacles could be the deciding factor so I think if I had to bet based on the new obstacles I would say Built different for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I've seen, I've seen um, where it's designated one male, one female. I think the female on that team, Danielle Gonzalez, I think she's what probably one of the best in the field with obstacle proficiency. Yeah. Um, you know, Jet works at an obstacle training gym, <laughs> so he's he's got no problems with them. Yeah. You know, Chad is very strong on on the carries, and then we know that Rihanna is excellent on the running. And she's strong. Um, so as I well. think, and she's strong as well. So I think overall they're the better team. I think maybe um, Obstacle Killers 2 might be slightly better, slightly better I'm on running. balance when it comes to running just because of, you know, Amrish and Stuart Maloney and so on. Yeah. But I, I think that that is going to be my one too. Um, and if you ask me in an hour, I might reverse that pick. Mm-hmm. And if you ask me in two hours, I might reverse it again. Right? So that's how close I think it, that's how close I think it is. So you definitely and, and think then, it's between Obstacle Killers and Built Different, yeah. Yeah, in my opinion. And I think that, you know, a very close third uh, will be outdoor fitness. Who's on um, Riot? And, uh, Riot is um, Phil, Philip Seven, uh, Vanessa Jokes, Chadwick. Um, Chadwick, yeah, Chadwick Brown. Chadwick and, and Jade. And Jade, yeah. Now, that team, that team is, is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I think, again, I would say, you know, Jade probably needs another year in a sport at least to really, really be up. Awesome. But I yeah. think she's she's obviously, in my opinion, the best female runner in the in the entire event, mm-hmm. and, and and that includes you know people like Laura Bryan, who's a, a you know a more of an endurance athlete. But Jade is Jade is just you know, collegiate is, uh, level, a collegiate different athlete, class, so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know. So I think 
you know, another year that team could be pushing. But I think that, you know, and, and on the day, I think that, you know, they could be a little bit of an upset there and they could maybe even be into third. But obstacle course racing is so unpredictable. All it takes is for somebody to get a stick up on an obstacle that they don't normally do, like we had last year, for example. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, everything is up in the air. Connect Four is the team of Nick Gill and uh, Gina Lee Shepard and Ron and Amanda Maximilian. And Yes, and again, yeah, that team. I, I love that team. Let me tell you yeah, something. Nick, Nick and Ron is the two guys on that team are crazy. Not, not just physically fit, but mentally fit. Right. Uh, Amanda, Amanda is, if, if, if Jade is number one, Amanda is definitely top five as far as female runners in the entire bar field is concerned. Yeah. Uh, and Gina is probably quietly one of the top three most obstacle proficient women in, in, and probably definitely the most improved bar athlete from last year to this year. So, um, again, if everything goes according to form, you have to say, you know, obstacle killers, uh, built different, outdoor fitness, maybe connect four, but I might even put um, Gina's and, and Ron's team ahead. Mm-hmm. But any of those five teams make a slip or get stick up on the basketball court or slipping off the grid, 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 grid because it's wet. Mm-hmm. And that whole podium, that whole podium could be different. I mean, back it up could come and jump in that podium if if there's a slip in them. Yeah, it, it, as you said, it could be anywhere. So my top uh, three, four Sunday's team event, I'm going to say I have Obstacle Killers 2 as the first place. I've got Built Different second, and I've got Connect 4 third. Nice, nice, nice. I think, though, that because I'm very sweet on Gina and her obstacle proficiency, it's just because mm-hmm. of the fact that um, both Amaris and Danielle Gonzalez have indeed been working their skills very well, that I would mm-hmm. still give the advantage to Obstacle Killers 2 and Built Different. But that Correct. Connect 4 team, that's a team of runners, yo. Yeah, yes. oh yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I always look at it as you are only as, your team is only as fast as the slowest runner. Exactly, <laughs> and and what, but once you get back to peg, yeah, you have to be obstacle proficient because all the advantage that you would have made in the running is now gone because That's the obstacles are so close together. And if every if you can get through an obstacle, you just run four k real hard for nothing. Yeah, so you have to be obstacle proficient once you get back to peg if you're going to be going to be successful in this event. All right, just looking at the forecast for the weather right now. It seems as though we're going to have brilliant weather on a Saturday, on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm looking at some rain tomorrow Sunday, so tomorrow Saturday. So hopefully, um, as we get into tomorrow, there's going to be some rain. We are talking tomorrow is the um, Amaroni Trust singles, correct? And we also have the Republic Bank Open Wave on Saturday, right? The ICBL Open Wave. ICBL, ICBL Open, Open Wave. Sorry, ap- apologies for that. I, I, Republic Bank is actually the corporate. Which is on Sunday, yeah. Which is on Sunday morning. All right, so mm-hmm. let's get into the singles event. And we are hitting up the ladies first, actually. The ladies okay. First, even uh-huh. though you've put the ladies to run in the last heat of, right. the, of the day. Is there any reasoning behind that? Yes, because we have to actually go and make some changes to some of the walls to accommodate the females. Oh. So you have the guys have the eight-foot walls and so on, and we have to go and put kickers on the walls for the ladies. Now, we could start with the ladies and take off the kickers, yeah. but let's say something happened and, and we couldn't get to that wall to take off the kickers, we could just pull them out the way. But if the kicker's on and we can't get them off, then it's a problem, right. you see? So, so, yeah. So when we start with the guys first, we've seated them and they go off. Um, and then the ladies are going to go at the end. All right, so on the ladies, we've got Maya Spires, um, Leander Gittins, Leora Fishman, Tonya Lane, Michelle Dowell, Danielle Gonzalez, Amaris Chase, and Gina Lee Shepard. Okay. And Sabrina Thompson. Sabrina Thompson. Oh, Brina, I, I Brina has entered. Sabrina, yeah, she's in for sure. Oh, great, great, great. All right. And the ladies are going to be doing what obstacles? The singles event is what obstacles again? Let me just go through them quickly. They've got the walls. Four foot wall, six foot wall, a frame cargo net, crawl, um, sandbag carry, sandbag carry, eight foot wall, eight foot wall. That could be the thing there that breaks up the whole field. Yeah. Um, inverted wall, um, rolling thunder, tire wall, yeah. 
after rolling thunder. It's uh, monkey bars, grip wig, uh, slick wall, container traverse, crawl, low traverse bar, atlas stone carry, rings, rope, dice platform. Dice platform. Okay, so now, now we know what the ladies are going to be trying to tackle, and that's going to be the same thing pretty much for the men as well. Pretty much, yeah. correct. Okay, so Maya, Leander, Leora, Tonya, Michelle, Danielle, Amaris, Gina Lee, and Breenza, Sabrina. Correct. Top five. We start at the top five. Top five. I'm going to say Danielle Gonzalez puts the perfect race together and beats Amaris. Mm-hmm. And I'm giving her that win largely because she's had more time on the obstacles to become comfortable with it. I've also seen Danielle's running as good as it was before. And she started up really being more of a sprinter. But mm-hmm. I've seen her distance running develop into something crazy. So before we would have said that, she couldn't run with Amherst. Mm-hmm. No, she can. I mean, she's running with Jade sometimes. Yeah. So I'm going to say... Um, and she's descending on, like crazy. I just want to add that. Listen, I just... It was, if, I wish the whole thing was 3K downhill, then I would know <laughs> that. She was great for sure. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she... Um, I, I am going to give it to Dan based on obstacle proficiency. Mm-hmm. I, I think she's going to be able to stay with Amherst, especially because there's no real room to run for any extended period. There's 20 obstacles over 3.5K. So you can work out the distance between. Yeah, and, and, so I, and I would add that between the start line and the four-foot wall is a long run. That's probably the longest run that they're going to have. But after that, correct. it's just bam, 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 bam. Exactly. And that was really just to break up the field so there's not really any budging on the obstacles. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to say that the obstacle proficiency that she would have developed from having more time and having more practice is going to be the thing that's going to distinguish her from Amherst, who I think is going to be second. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that third is going to be very close, but I am actually going to put our most improved athlete, Gina Lee Shepard, on the podium. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put her in third. I would normally have um, Michelle Dowell next and fourth. Mm-hmm. And I think, again, just because she's been studying for her medical board exams, she may not have had as much time. Yeah. So I think I think it may be possible for Sabrina to sneak in there in fourth, mm-hmm. and then Michelle is it. Okay, I don't know of Michelle's obstacle proficiency. I know she, uh, not Michelle. I, I have actually I haven't seen Michelle on the obstacles, and when I say obstacles, I'm mainly thinking grip rig right now. Right. Um, but I don't know if she's going to be with tire wall and the grip rig coming back to back. I could see some burpees uh, that being done there. For a lot of these ladies, no. If Danielle gets over the tire wall, then I believe it's her race to win. Correct. If she fails the tire wall, and Amaris, who doesn't really fail obstacles, gets over the tire wall and manages to get through the grip break, then I think the deficit is going to be very difficult um, yeah. for Dan to make up. No. Correct. You don't. You don't give Amaris. 50 meters and expect to catch her. That doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50, uh, 20 burpees is more than 50 meters. It's 20 burpees is the penalty this year, right? Correct. Yeah, so that being said, I am going with Amaris. Right. I'm going with Amaris 1, Danielle 2, Gina Lee 3. Right. I haven't seen Sabrina on the obstacles either, and I haven't seen Michelle on the obstacles but I'm actually going to go brings in a third because she would have, a fourth, sorry, because she would have been working. Right. Uh, and just because Michelle would have been otherwise engaged. And we're not knocking you, Michelle, because we totally understand it's just bar. <laughs> right, but, <laughs> right, right, right. So, yeah, that's my top. Um, Amaris one, Danielle two, uh, Gina Lee three. Right, right. All right, right. so you got those, those written in stone. You going Danielle first, I going Amaris first. Right. Uh, let's remind you all guys, we both have obstacle killers at number one and uh, built different at number two for now in uh, the, the team. And now we get to the big one. I mean, it's the first <laughs> event of the weekend, <laughs> but it's probably one of the most anticipated events. Uh, guys, when you've heard this, you would, uh, by the time you hear this, it would have already been done and dusted. We've just given you all our predictions so uh, that you all would see how well we know these athletes and how well we know the bar race. No, right. we've got a lot of entries in the, the men's singles event. I'm going to run through them all quickly. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first 
with uh, Nicholas Beckles, Demron Thompson, also known as Tompy, Darren Matthews, returning champion, uh, Clive Singh, I believe he was a uh, fourth last year, Jet James, who won his wave last year, Phil Scanterbury, who qual qualified the last year uh, for the OCR in his age category, Jason Green had a really commendable showing at the Simpson Motors pop-up. Patrick Salt Bellamy, Jamal Griffith, very obstacle proficient. Damian Thompson, husbands, he's been putting in the work. And then at 10.30, the second wave, you have Fabian and Norgrove. We've got to talk about how come he in this wave, first of all, because he's a very quick guy. In the spring, mm -hmm. Gavin Thompson, Obadelli Ford, Marlon Hines, Leland Lazarus, Ross Hunt, Kamal Gopi-Lewis, another strong runner, Ron Small, a very strong individual as well. It's Keeflin King, the boxer. Correct. And that second wave is crazy, George. Like people are sleeping <laughs> on that second wave, but they don't realize yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on there. And then yeah. uh, in the third wave, you've got Dylan Clark, Sanjeev Herewood. He's another improved athlete this year. He's been putting in the work. Richard Sperrin, uh, that's Richie. That's Richie, correct. Yeah, he's been doing the work as well. Marco Montero, Raheem Skinner, Nicholas Rinner, Stephen Gemman, another bar baby. He now um, started the bar this year. I'm looking forward to seeing how he uh, gets through the course. Uh, Kevon Delaney. Kevin Fouchon, John right. Sampson, and uh, Kyle Taylor. Any late entries that I don't know about? Ramel Amy. He Ramel wasn't Amy. actually late entry, but Ramel is in there as well for the singles. So he's running in which wave? He's going to run in the second wave. Second wave for Ramel Amy. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to go through and say, let me see who's going to win each wave. <laughs> but I just want to talk first of all about that second wave because I think that between uh, Fabian Norgrove, who is who has represented Barbados on the track and field stage, and I think he's running like between seventeen and eighteen point for five k right now. Yeah, right. Him, Kamal, who is also a fairly strong runner, Ron and Keithlin King. That wave mm -hmm. is going to be very exciting. Exactly. I mean, it is entirely possible that one of the top five athletes comes from that second wave. Yeah. So when, when everything went up, I had about four or five people message me and say, man, we want to see Fabian run against Darren. Mm -hmm. See if you can move the waves. I'm like, First of all, I've already put up the waves. So I, I don't know what would be my justification for going back and changing it now. Yeah. That would look a little corrupt. Yeah. But also, I think we saw last year, we saw Reject. that there were endurance, mm -hmm. not Reject, not Reject, oh, we sorry. saw that there were endurance athletes who came out, guys who would crash your mountain biking, grass, men who would kill you for running. But because they weren't obstacle proficient, mm -hmm. they suffered. Mm -hmm. So they came and they had to do burpees at every skill and half the walls. Mm -hmm. They were fine with the carries. They were great with the running. But with the skills and the carry and the and the uh, walls. and the walls, Obstacles. they just they just had too many they just had too many burpees to do. Mm -hmm. No Having never seen Fabian compete over an obstacle course race, it was hard for me to put him in that first heat with guys who had placed in bar, who had won their age group in bar, guys who were doing the sims and winning their, their sim. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's, you know, it's possible that he, his time could end up being in the top 10 times. Mm -hmm. But as far as racing is concerned, I think I had to give the guys who I know to be you know, seasoned obstacle course athletes. I had to put them in that first week. All right, good. Now, next year, if he comes and he, you know, he shows out. And like you said, that second wave is still going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, but, George. I ain't taking nothing <laughs> right. away from that second wave. I like, like, hey, mean, you can only, wave. exactly, right? You I'm have to somehow him. divide them. Pardon me? They say some, you have to somehow divide them. Everybody can be yeah, in the first wave. Everybody can be right? one wave, yeah. So, you know, I think it's going to make for, I think it's going to be interesting because once guys finish, once guys see the finish of the first wave, mm -hmm. they're right. going to say, all right, I see what you got to do. That is I know what time you got to beat. I think and that is key. Mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that is key. Everybody's going to have their watch on. Everybody's going to go on the Garmin, the Samsung, something, the Apple Watch. And they're mm -hmm. going to know what time they are gunning for. You know, Correct. Uh, well, you might have to do t t uh, a few 20 burpees if you are not obstacle proficient. If you are right. some person that is running a 323K at your, at your cruising pace, <laughs> you might be able right. to make up some time still. All right, let's get down to the predictions. A notable absence would be a dandy. You don't have a dandy right. in the field this year. And that kind of 
not sadden me. Uh, 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 the opposite of saddened me, actually, is what I was saying. <laughs> but I didn't see his name on it. So, we have one is where we're expecting a lot of the heat. Nicholas Beckles, Demron Thompson, Darren Matthews, Clive Singer, Jet James, uh, Phillips Canterbury, Jason Green, uh, Patrick Bellamy, Jamal Griffith, Damian Thompson, husbands. Uh, let's go down to the top five. Top five. Okay, so I think this year, I think this year Jet gets it. Mm-hmm. I think this year Jet gets it because it is so obstacle dense. There's 20 obstacles over three and a half K. Mm-hmm. And Jet isn't just, isn't obstacle proficient. Jet is crazy at just about every obstacle. Mm-hmm. Even though he's a slighter athlete, he's still crazy on the carries. Mm-hmm. So, and I think his running is decent enough that he can stay within striking distance. If Darren has to do burpees on more than one obstacle this year, mm-hmm. I can't see him beating Jet. Mm-hmm. He missed the tire wall last year and was still able to win. Mm-hmm. But he has, again, he hasn't had as much time on some of the newer obstacles because he was away, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And for those of you who, who were wondering how, how come Darren ran, he sent me his, his um, negative test results on the Friday before the event, so I knew that he was good to go. Okay. But I think that if... Um, Darren misses more than one obstacle, Jet's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. Now, if Darren manages to run a clean course, then it's possible that, that he, he wins. And I say possible because I just think that Jet is so fast through these weights. Yeah, he's he so is. fast through the obstacles. And that, fearless. Yeah, and fearless. So that guy's flat for he hesitating. Yeah. He can run up there. He can probably try to jump over the whole thing. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think this year, I actually put, put Jet at number one. And I, I will have to put, you know, you have to respect Darren at number two, but I think that actually a, a good, fresh Tompi, again, who's very obstacle proficient, very strong with the carries. I think, you know, it could be close. But I'm going to go Jet. I'm going to go Darren. I'm going to go Tompi at number three. Um, number four could be anybody. I remember, yeah, like, last year, Clyde just turned up last year and I, I come fourth. For no reason at all. Clive, I am going for a fight. Clive saying, yeah, Clive. Was yeah, but he, was, he would have been training with, with Dandy and them, though. So he, he he turned up, but we didn't know that he was turning up, turning up. He right, almost right, called right. Randy Lickrish, right? Like, he, he, he exactly. Like, almost like Jet, because we didn't see Jet much of Jet last year. I don't know, a couple of pop ups. He was like, well, yeah, he seemed good, but I mean, who is he? <laughs> correct, correct, correct. Yeah. But he stop at three. I don't want to go past three. Yeah, let me not go past up. three. I think um, another notable absence, I hope he's listening, he always listens, uh, would be Chad Forbes. I realize Chad will run from the licks in the singles event to focus, <laughs> on, <laughs> to focus on the team, right? Right, right, right. He's one of the members of a team built different as well. He's a very strong athlete. He looked really good at the Simpson Motors pop-up. And I'm very surprised not to see him uh, listed here. Him and Chad, the two of you all, I realize you all have... Put your main focus on the team event. I will let you all back in singles uh, in uh, June. I thank you very much. My top three uh, goes a bit like this. Um, uh, it's going to be the first time you're seeing Demron versus Jet. Mm-hmm. Both of these guys are crazy. Uh, both of these guys do not like to be behind anybody. So they <laughs> race each other hard. They're both very tough mentally. And they're both very obstacle proficient. I actually give it to Tom P. Right, right, right. I give it to Tom P. Just based on a raw strength. I think, um, and you've designed this course in a way that strength doesn't really matter, to be honest, George. We only got really one super heavy carry, which is the Atlas Stone. Right. You understand? So the, the, uh, but I think I give it to Tompy for no reason other than the fact that I know he would have been putting in a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And he correct, wants it. He want, I'm not saying that Jet doesn't want it, but I think Tompy wants it, wants it. And he would uh, run to his foot pop off to, to right. take this title um, tomorrow. Um, yeah. I actually have in a third place... I got I got between myself and Damien in third place over oh nice over uh, Darren over, over Darren and, yeah. this, and is, I, I, uh-huh. this is because we know Darren has been otherwise engaged as well he is a super athlete right but 
I genuinely cannot see Darren, uh, and I mean, this may sound very foolish when you all hear this, but I can't see him because of the fact that the tire wall and right. the grip breaker come back to back on the right. course. I can see him failing one or t- one, if not both, of those obstacles. Right. I, I mean, if you fail the tire wall and you got 20 burpees and then you got to go to like Mon- monkey grip bars and then the grip rig, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that could definitely strip you up for sure. Yeah, so I, I, I would like to see it. I ain't got no problem with my co host being on that podium. <laughs> yeah. um, Thanks for that. But I yeah, I think sure. um, having watched the former that Damien has been in and watching his uh, training regimen, he's been training very smart as mm-hmm. well. So uh, I think he's picking this week, which is important. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Jason Green, I mean, we can't start this, you can't get on everybody. Everybody in this race has a chance. But I think it's, it's definitely Tom P. Jet, myself, or David. So, yeah, nice. So, yeah. I, I like it. Yeah, I like it. So tomorrow, well, so for those of you who are listening, we would have known the result, and we'll see who uh, who made the best predictions. Yeah. So my predictions again: of the killers one, built different two, outdoor fitness three, mm-hmm. um, female Danielle Gonzalez, um, Amber Chase, Gina Lee Shepherd, and uh, Jet James. Darren Matthews, Damon Thompson, um, for the for the meal. So yeah, I mean, we'll see which which one of us who got it close. We, we, we betting anything on these bets, or are we just we just, uh, we just doing this with fun? Kind of a better rush guard because you do you got a rush guard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, get, I get buy a case of beer for you if you, if you if you get closer. If you get closer than you, all right, that sounds good, man, George. Thank you so right, much buddy. for joining me this week. Again, we went over time a little bit, but you know, this is the second to last podcast. We're going to be back again one more week as we recap everything that happened. Right, right now, today's the prediction show. And next week will be the recap show. And as we look forward to the last weekend in June of 2021. Yes, sir. So we want to thank you guys for following the podcast after the last few weeks. And uh, we are going to be taking a break after the prediction show next week, but we want to make it we don't want to take a break till the next season. They want to do it at least once a month. Mm-hmm. Keep you guys engaged, like you know what's happening as far as you know training and so on is concerned. Uh, to keep the community engaged and keep them connected to the brand for sure. Yeah, I think that um, in June, once we get um, a more, hopefully, COVID behaves, um, mm-hmm. we're going to get some more people coming out again. Uh, some more teams uh, for sure coming out. And more individuals coming out to to represent for bar. I honestly think that this may be the last. Um, bar race for dominance of the bar tribe. I honestly believe mm. that the sport is going to take off to such a degree that you're going to see some superb athletes coming through. Younger right. athletes, stronger athletes uh, coming through. People who play football, people who box, um, people who run uh, are not necessarily going to the Olympics. Understand? Right, right, right. That, that come and develop some proficiency and really boost the sport. And uh, on the other side, I'm very, very impressed to hear how many teams we have in the corporate. Corporate. Yeah. Yes. And the open wave. Yeah. I, I always thought, I had always said that I think the growth of the team event was going to be in the corporate because we expect the competitive wave to become more and more competitive over time. Yeah. But I think it's a perfect event for companies and organizations to use the, you know, build connections amongst their, their staff and build some camaraderie amongst their teams. So, yeah, I, I think that we will continue to see corporate. We may even have to give corporate its own day. Yeah. <laughs> How many corporate teams are we looking for to, um, this weekend? 26 corporate teams. Woo! We have five waves, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and manage them the best we can. Hopefully nobody's out there too long. <laughs> yeah, but because the more you are on the course, the more fun you have. Yeah. All right, George. <laughs> Thankfully, they're going in the morning. Yeah. They're going on Sunday morning. Correct. All right, great. All right, George, I'll see you um, uh, this evening. Probably uh, we're going to pop up Peg. Uh, and see how everything is coming along and um, we will all the best over the weekend make sure all the rigs are safe all the bells are in place correct thank you sir I look forward to seeing you on the podium on Saturday <laughs> yeah even if I go stand up there before or after the ceremony <laughs> <laughs> all right bye bye take bye bye Thank you so much. That has been the Barcast for today. It was our prediction show. Of course, you're listening to it after uh, the bar race has been run off for November 2020. But I want to thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Probably getting a few laughs at us and at our expense as we probably got a lot of things wrong uh, this morning. But you know what? 
It's all fun and games. It's all about bar. It's about being safe, having fun, and everybody staying healthy. Good, clean, fun, and uh, see you all again next time.